Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I want to get real about the seven signs that you can look out for to know if you're ready for sex. And this applies if you are someone who has never had sex before or if you're someone who has had sex before but you've just started seeing a new person and you're trying to work out if the time is right to take things to the next level. So make sure you watch right through to the end because the last couple of points in particular are very important. So if you're ready to work out if it's time to take things to the next level, keep on watching. Welcome back to my channel. Are you serious with me? Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> I don't understand how these things always happen to me. While sex is definitely supposed to be fun, deciding whether or not you should have sex with someone can be a not so fun process. It can be quite confronting and confusing. There are so many factors at play, social expectations, peer pressure, our feelings about that person, maybe pressure from the other person. There are just a whole host of things to take into consideration and it can be quite overwhelming. So hopefully these little seven kind of tips or signs to look out for will be something that will actually help you make that decision a lot easier and by the time you've finished watching this video you will know what is the right call for you. Arguably one of the most important factors when it comes to deciding if you are ready to have sex, whether that is sex for the first time or just sex for the first time with a new person, is if it is sex with the right person. Now, I do want to say I'm not talking about the right person as in, is this person your forever person? Is this the person you're going to marry? Is this person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with? I'm not even talking about, is this someone that you're in love with? There's a lot of pressure put onto girls and women in particular that we shouldn't have sex unless it's with someone we love. And I couldn't disagree with this more. You are allowed as a woman, just as we allow boys and men to have sex that is just for fun. That is a totally acceptable reason to have sex. But the person you have sex with should definitely be a factor you take into consideration. While you don't need to be in love with that person, you do need to feel safe with that person. You do need to feel that that person is someone who is going to respect you and your boundaries. You need to have trust with that person because sex is an incredibly intimate experience. So you don't want to do it with someone that you don't feel you can trust. And you just want to feel that that is actually a person that you would like to have sex with. Now this one really should go without saying, but I think it does need to be said because we send people so many confusing signals about sex that sometimes it's actually genuinely quite difficult to work out if you actually want to have sex or if you're having sex because you feel that you should be having sex. Now, if you are a younger person watching this video, chances are you feel pressure to have sex because you're hearing that all your friends are having sex and you don't want to be the only one who's not having sex. I remember being in that position myself when I was in high school and I had a boyfriend and we started talking about having sex, but I decided it was so much more important for me to actually do what was right for me than to do something just to fit in with a bunch of people who I didn't even know if I was going to be friends with forever. And now as a grown ass woman, I can tell you, I wouldn't recognize half the people that I went to school with if I saw them on the street. I don't know any of those people anymore. And so I'm so glad that I didn't waste my time trying to impress them. And so it's important to take that into consideration when you're thinking about having sex. Is it something that you want or is it something that you're feeling pressure to do to fit in? If you're young, it might be fitting in at school and feeling like you're an adult. Or if you're older and you're getting into a new relationship, it might be pressure that's coming from your new partner. A lot of men will pressure women into having sex before they're ready by saying things 
is like, come on, don't be boring. How long are you going to make me wait? You know, I can't wait for you forever. If we don't do it soon, I probably am going to get bored and leave. And really just kind of lay on the threats to make you feel kind of guilty and like you should be having sex with them because if you don't, you're just a shitty person. Now, someone who respects you is never going to put that kind of pressure on you. So if you do have a partner that's doing that, please see that as a huge red flag and please kick their ass to the curb as soon as you finish watching this video. Today's video is brought to you by Moments Condoms. In the heat of the moment, it can sometimes be hard to make the right choice. 68% of women say they aren't completely comfortable buying condoms and 37% of people surveyed admitted to having unprotected sex in the last month. Well, it's time for that to change. Emblazoned with empowering sex positive messages, Moments Condoms are a perfect fit, pun intended for your bedroom adventures, whether you're having an all-nighter or a quickie. You can choose from a variety of Moments condoms. Go vegan, textured, or ultra thin. Their condoms are designed for pleasure and durability. Moments use premium quality latex and test each and every condom to ensure there aren't any unwanted surprises. Think of Moments condoms as your trusty, rubbery best friend. They're there for the moments you want to remember and to help you through the ones you'd rather forget. Designed for men, women, and non-binary people, Moments condoms want to destroy the stigma around carrying condoms and help everyone have hot, safe sex. Ensure your good times are safe times and join the movement today. Use my discount code Nadia M O X O 25 to receive 25% off any Moments product and make safe sex a priority today. Now this is a big one and this is another confusing one, particularly for women because women and girls don't really get taught about the fact that our bodies can experience pleasure, specifically sexual pleasure. And so it can be confusing to even know what does sexual pleasure or sexual desire feel like? And for that reason, this is why I recommend that young women and girls masturbate, that is have solo sex where it's just you on your own, in your bedroom, touching your own body, either with your hand or with a vibrator, that you do that first before you go and have coupled sex. And the reason I recommend that is because it will help you to actually identify the things that feel good for you. If you just go and have partnered sex without ever having masturbated or touched your own body and brought your own body to orgasm, then it's kind of like, going into it blind. Like you don't even really know what sexual pleasure is supposed to feel like because you haven't really kind of practiced it. So it's sort of like a practice go and it's a chance to get more comfortable in your body and to actually be able to know what feels good. So you can tell those things to your partner. You can tell them the way you like to be touched and you can know what should be feeling good and what doesn't feel so good. Having sex isn't just about wanting to have sex in your mind. It's also about wanting to have sex down there. Do you have sexual desire? Do you have sexual arousal? Do you feel turned on? Do you feel horny? It's important to consider these things as well. If you're just desiring to have sex in your head, but you're not getting any of those nice, warm, delicious, tingly feelings of feeling aroused and turned on when you think about having sex, that kind of just warm, nice, delicious feeling that you get down between your legs. If you're not getting that when you're thinking about having sex with a person you're planning on having sex with, then it might be a sign that actually you're not ready to have sex yet, whether that is sex for the first time or if it's just sex with a new person. It might be a sign that actually you need to just take things at your own pace. And that is totally fine. This idea that we all need to be progressing in our relationships and going into adulthood at the same rate is just ridiculous. It's it's not a cookie cutter we're, that we're all trying to fit into. Sex and our sexuality and feeling comfortable in our bodies, it's a journey that we all go on and it's different for all of us. And whatever pace you take it at is totally okay. 
Now this is a really big one and it's a really commonly overlooked one. And I'm gonna put it out there guys, I myself have been guilty of totally neglecting this in the past and it's definitely one of my biggest regrets. If you are thinking about having sex, you also need to be thinking about safety. You need to be thinking about not just things like contraception and being prepared with condoms, but also things like STIs. Now, if you are in a relationship with someone, you might want to look at getting tested for STIs and asking your partner if they can get tested for STIs, especially if you're planning on having unprotected sex. My strong, strong, strong recommendation is to always have protected sex when you're having sex for the first time with anyone because you do not know that person's sexual history. They might tell you their sexual history, but unfortunately that's, you know, you can't always go on what people are telling you. And there are plenty of horror stories of people having unprotected sex because their partner told them, it's okay, I'm totally clean, I don't have any STIs. And then that person ending up with a case of herpes or gonorrhea or something like that. Now, I will say that STIs, thankfully, are really treatable, at least most STIs are nowadays, and a lot of them can just be treated with a course of antibiotics or an antibiotic cream prescribed to you by your doctor. So STIs aren't something to necessarily cause huge concern or to, you know, be super stressed about, but you definitely need to be smart about it and be taking as many precautions as possible to avoid contracting an STI. And that's just part of being a responsible, sexually active adult is that you practice safe sex and you also in turn expect your partners to practice safe sex. So really think about the potential consequences of sex and if you are ready for those consequences when you're considering it. So those things are obviously STIs. If you are going to be engaging in heterosexual sex, then there's also the added risk of pregnancy. But it is something that you should be thinking about if you are going to be engaging in heterosexual sex sex is, you know, what happens if pregnancy occurs? What happens if the condom breaks? Do I have a plan to go and get the morning after pill? Am I on the birth control pill? Have you thought about all of these options? Really make sure you've weighed all these things up in your head. This is kind of the unfun part of preparing for sex, but it's also a really super important part. Setting realistic expectations, particularly when you're going to have sex for the first time, is so important. I'm here to tell you guys, when you have sex for the first time, it is not going to look or feel like the way it is portrayed in the movies. It is going to be messy. Something embarrassing will probably happen. You will probably accidentally elbow someone in the head, you might fart, or you might fall out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. FYI, all of those things have happened to me. And guess what? I'm still alive. The best thing you can do if something goes wrong, which it inevitably will, is just laugh at yourself. Sex is supposed to be messy. It's supposed to be not this neat choreographed thing that we see in the movies. The movies present just such an unrealistic portrayal of sex. And the same goes for pornography. Pornography shows people having orgasms that come easily and quickly and they have lots of them. And that's just really often not the case for a lot of people. Orgasms can be really hard to come across, no pun intended, or they might not happen at all. And you have to remember that just because you don't have an orgasm doesn't mean that you had bad sex. That is an unrealistic expectation to expect that sex is definitely going to result in an orgasm because it might not. And you have to be ready for that. And you have to be ready for all the things that might go wrong, like the condom slipping off and having to put on a new one, like someone falling out of the bed, whatever it might be. Just be really realistic that it's definitely going to be at least a little bit awkward and at least a little bit nerve wracking. And that's okay. 
This one is so important and this is something I talk about a lot on this channel. When people think of great sex, they think about, you know, sex positions and certain oral sex techniques and different tricks and hacks and toys that you can use in the bedroom. But the secret to really, really great sex is actually a whole lot more boring and it is great communication. That's it. It's really that simple. Communicating clearly and openly and honestly with your partner is absolutely critical to having good sex and more specifically consensual sex because consent is absolutely everything when it comes to sex. Consent should be something that is given enthusiastically and regularly. Just because you decided that you wanted to have sex with someone does not mean that you can't get a couple of minutes in and change your mind. You are allowed to change your mind at any time and that's why communication is key because you need to be able to communicate those things with your partner and you also need to be doing it with a partner that's going to actually really respect you and listen to you. So make sure that you have actually communicated prior to sex you know what do we both want from this are we both ready from this if i you know sort of change my mind halfway through are you going to be cool with that i want to really you know feel that i can take this at my own pace are you happy if we go slowly all of those sorts of things are really important things to discuss so if you want to know if you're ready for sex really look at whether or not it's something you've even communicated to your partner about because if you haven't communicated to your partner about sex then chances are you're not ready for sex you have to carry condoms if you're planning on having sex i do not care what your gender is everyone who is having sex needs to carry condoms and this isn't just true for heterosexual couples this is true in so many situations this is true even for lesbian couples if you are using a sex toy you need to be putting a condom over the sex toy because if you're using that toy with more than one person you can still actually spread stis through sex toys stis do not get spread just through penises and vaginas or vulvas they get spread through sex toys as well so basically everyone who is having any kind of sexual activity at all should be carrying condoms or dental dams so make sure that you are prepared because if you're not prepared with proper protection then you're definitely not ready to have sex so I hope those tips have helped you decide if you are ready for sex. Let me know in the comment section down below, have you decided if you're ready for sex? Yes or no? There is no right answer to this, by the way. You can absolutely decide that you're not ready or that you're ready either answer is totally acceptable and guys if you enjoyed this video and you're new here i would love you to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss my new videos when they come out i love welcoming new people to my sex positive family i'm always making content like this and i also make content on other taboo topics like mental health and vaginas and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Mwah.